Preparing some primers? Here's a few tips. So when you order oligonucleotides like primers for your PCR reaction, they're typically gonna come as powders. And so they come in these tubes and they're powders and on the side, it'll tell you how many nanomoles are in it. Or maybe it'll be on a spec sheet. The number of nanomoles is important because there's a quick tip where if you add one microliter per nanomol, that would give you a one millimolar solution. If you add 10 microliters per nanomol, that gives you a hundred micromolar solution. I like resuspending all my primers to a hundred micromolar and then making a one to 10 dilution of those to get 10 micromolar working stocks. By having the higher concentrations, it keeps it more stable. And then you can have the working concentrations just by making that simple one to 10 dilution. So I say do 90 microliters plus 10 microliters of my 100 micromolar stock. When you're doing those dilutions, those resuspensions, there's a couple of things you wanna keep in mind. One is that you're working with DNA or you're working with RNA, which is even more precious that you need to be careful with. So what you wanna do is use really good water. And so not just the water that comes out of your milling pour typically, but instead like one of those ultra pure molecular biology grade water. Either that or something like TE buffer, so Tris EDTA. The EDTA is a chelating agent, and so it'll go and it'll steal metals from some of the nucleases that need metals in order to chew up the DNA or to chew up the RNA. I like avoiding the EDTA just because it can get in the way with some things you might want to do later on. So you could also just do like 10 millimolar tris as long as it's really sterile, like filter sterilized. Typically it's going to be about 7.5 to 8 is the range that you would want that buffer to be in. And then typically about one millimolar if you're adding the EDTA. But I usually just use ultra pure water and dilute them that way. So what I do is I go through and typically your primers are gonna have these weird long names on the side. So I give everything a shortcut. So this is like P12 to P21 in this case. And I have a spreadsheet where I have all my primers listed. I have the sequence of that primer and then I have the code number, the sequence, and like its longer name and what it's used for. So like what plasmid does it actually match to? Then I write on the top of the tubes, like the P12, 13, whatever, and the 100 micromolar. And then I know that when I take this tube out, I can just look at the cap and then the details of it on their side. So I just need to look at that number on the top and cross-reference it. I use the same cross-reference number. I set up a separate tube that this is gonna be my dilution. So I go through and I look at all the tubes and I figure out which one's which and write the code on the top. And then I make a separate tube where I have that code. And on the side of it, I also have the date. And this one, I'm gonna have it be 10 micromolar. So I write 10 micromolar on it, right on the top of the tube and the side of the tube. And then I line these up in front of the tubes that they go with. I go through each of the tubes, look at the number of nanomoles and have my P1000 and my P200 because sometimes it's in the P200 range and sometimes it's in the P1000 range. And so the P1000 can technically go down to 100, but you always wanna use the smallest pipette for the job. So if I say have 159 microliters, I need to pipette, well then I'm gonna go for the P200, even though I could technically do it with the P1000. So you wanna have both of those things ready as well as probably the P10 for making your dilutions. So look at the side of the tube and each of them is gonna be different. This one's like 19.3 nanomoles. So don't go by what you order in terms of like, they have some sort of synthesis level go by what's actually written on the tube because it's gonna vary. So this one has 19.3, so I would add 193 microliters of water. This one had 19.5, so I'd add 195 microliters of water and so on. Be careful you're using the microliter, the mic nanomolars and not the milligrams. So one microliter per nanomol would give you one millimolar, 10 microliters per nanomol would give you 100 micromolar. And so I go through and I dilute each of these to 100 micromolar. But before I actually add that water, what I do is I do a quick spin of all of them. So after I put the names on the lids, I then put them in order in the micro centrifuge, do a little quick pull spin. The reason why is that because it comes as a powder and it's going through the mail and it's like all over the place, you can get the powder actually on the top of the tube. And then when you go and you screw open the tube, you lose your primer or you lose your Lego or whatever it is. And so by doing that quick spin before you open it, that prevents that from happening. You'll typically see some sort of film or powder on the bottom. 
when you add the water so you just want to add it like directly to the top don't stick your tip in that in that film or in that powder because then it might get stuck in there instead just add it directly on the top let it dissolve a second and then go up and down a couple times depending on what you're working with sometimes you might need to actually heat it a little in order to resuspend it but with your typical dna primers they they resuspend really easily once you once they're like you dilute it so you add the liquid and then you want to go up and down a couple times with your pipette mix it really well and then let it sit a little more and then while you're letting it sit and resuspending fully then you go and you add i add 90 microliters of water or whatever you want to do because you want a 1 to 10 dilution if you're diluting it to 10 micromolar from 100 micromolar if you wanted 20 micromolar, then you would do a 1 to 5 dilution, um, if, depending on what concentrations you want. It, I like to just make them all the diluted versions at the same time to the same concentration that I want. So in this case, I decided, okay, 100 microliters of each of these would be plenty. So it's a 1 to 10 dilution. 100 divided by 10 would be 10. So I need to have 10 microliters of my concentrated primer per each of these tubes, which means that I need 100 minus 10, so 90 microliters of water in each of these tubes. And so I just go through and I add the water to all of them first. I do it all at once so I don't need to change my tip because it's just water into empty tubes. And now I can go through and I can add 10 microliters of my stock solution into my 90 microliters of my water. When I'm adding it, because I'm adding a small volume into a large volume, I wanna make sure that I, first of all, because they're clear liquids, you wanna look and make sure that you actually pull up the 10 microliters, then go into the surface, put your pipette tip into the surface of the 90 microliters of water, push down, and then you wanna go up and down a few times. Now that's not mixing it. You're doing 10 microliters into 90 microliters, that's not mixing it. Instead, you're kind of just diluting what's in the tip and making sure that you get everything out of the tip and that any drops that are left in the tip aren't the concentrated stuff. Instead, they're basically just the diluted things. And then you wanna take it with your thumb up, still press down, pull out, make sure you didn't draw out the liquid. And now you're like, okay, I'm done. Not quite. Your tube is not very well mixed. And so you can, there are a couple of ways you can mix things. And so you can like finger flick it and stuff. Or what you could do is just take a P200 now and pipette up and down. You should have 100 microliters in here. Typically, I wouldn't even set my, my, my pipette to 100 microliters. I set it to like 75 or something lower than your total volume. This will avoid you, this will keep it from like drawing out air when you're mixing. So you wanna go down and go up and down a few times. If you have the full volume, then you kinda of have to be careful you're not going all the way so you're not blowing stuff out or you're not pulling air up. And so by setting it to a smaller volume, you're able to easily mix it. Once you've mixed it, what to do? So you can do a pulse spin if you've got liquid all over the sides of the tubes. Or if not, what you can do is you can just go and use them not when you're not ready to use them and when you're done using them just store them in the freezer so i stick them in the minus 20. they should be good for a long time as long as you use that ultra pure water if you're gonna use it a lot you want to make aliquots and so one of the reasons why having like the higher concentration stock in addition to it being more stable is that you can make more aliquots along the way so that if one of the aliquots say gets contaminated and you're actually accidentally pipetting and you realize you pipetted this oh, I forgot to change my tip or something like that. Well, now you've got a new tube or if something wonky is happening with one of the tubes, you're like, is it my primer? You can go and you can make a new one. Speaking of, is, is there something wrong with my primer? One thing you want to do though is when you're making it, if you're doing like 90 microliters all at a time, it can be easy to think, okay, I added, I, this one's done, but you didn't actually add the 10 microliters and it can be kind of hard to tell those smaller volumes. So I like to line things up and then move things as I do it. And so I know that, okay, I moved it when it's, when I've done that step. And if it's not moved, then I haven't done that step yet. And then have it kind of like lined up where things are. Then I just, in the future, I look at the top of the tube and I have the number, I cross reference it to my sheet or, I, and I go knowing in what I want to look for. I find it in my freezer and hopefully have a successful PCR run or whatever you want to do. So I did a lot with RNA in my grad school and now I do basically just primers and stuff when I'm doing my cloning. So we got some primers. We're going to do some molecular cloning, do some site-directed mutagenesis to study what how our protein works and what specific parts of our protein do what and why and how. So thanks to Karina and Liam for helping me 
dilute primers today. 